Alright, so a few people were asking me what kind of terminal I use, and um, I like using these drop down terminals because it's easy. You know, you do like one command and um, pops out, do whatever you want, and then you're done, and then you close it off and it's gone. So that's why I like these type of terminal. You just pop it out when you need to and close it when you don't. Um, so on GNOME, I use this thing called Gake. So I only recommend that for GNOME users. Okay, don't try to mix and match uh, KD stuff uh, unless you really need to. So yeah, Gake. Just watch my video on that if you'll need more information. But on KDE, I use this thing called Yakquake. Uh, it's very popular, but I guess not. You know, not everyone knows about it, and I actually never talked about it until today. So this is Yakquake. This is what I use on KDE. All right. It actually has more features uh, than, than you know the gate program, but let me show you. Oh yeah, let me show you the transparency because some of my old videos, my compositing wasn't working, and I'll show you that it is sexy also. Okay, uh, so let me open Dolphin or something like that, and you can see it does have transparency. You can see you know in the back. Uh, the wallpapers and other programs that you're running so yeah it does have transparency just that make sure you have compositing on like you know kwin or your desktop effects or whatever right and transparency will work anyways to show you some of the settings that you should do uh, so what you do is pop this out and then um, what was that well, the default hotkey is F12 to pop it out, all right? And then you have this little arrow here. And what you want to do is go to Manage Profiles. And in here, go to Edit. And then go to Appearance. You want to make it look sexy, so this is what we're going to do. So Color Scheme. I don't really recommend the other ones because it's kind of ugly. The one that I recommend is the green and black, all right? And click on that, and then you can change your... Uh, or increase your font size by using this slider. You can change the font if you want to. Um, as far as the transparency, click on the color scheme and make sure you go to edit, and then you can go to um, you know change the transparency. Because back in the days I had it like this, because my um, K win wasn't working, so it was all black and it looks unsexy, but now it works because I'm using the newer version now and I can do transparency no problems right so anyways that's all you gotta do in here uh, they do have some other stuff if you want to play around with it uh, to your liking other one that I probably recommend is unlimited scroll back because sometimes you have like a uh, a long output then you can scroll back no problems okay everything else in here like I said before um, just play around with it. Anyways, apply and hit OK, and just hit OK, and you're done with that. Uh, other stuff you can do: configure yacht quake, and then you can do the height and width. Just use the slider. So we'll just go the width, or we'll just you know do that here for the width, the height, who make it bigger, or whatever, and just apply and hit OK. Uh, other stuff in here is the shortcuts. So the default hotkey was F12 to open it, but you can change it to whatever you want. So the default here, and you make your own custom. I used the um, the swiggy line. I think that's the default on, on uh, Quake also the game, but I I, I never played that game. I played Counter Strike, and this is what they had the little tilde key or whatever you want to call it, and I'm used to that. So from Counter Strike 1.6. Um, on Steam. <laughs> Anyways, hit OK. Uh, but they do have some other what is it, high keys for to use uh, yeah, Quake, and I'll show you it off right now. Okay, but these are the high keys here. So I just hit OK. Uh, so what you can do in here, they do have more features than Gake, like I said. Um, if you want to make a new shell, so let me get, show you here. Let's list something out so it looks different. Uh, control shift n is to make a new shell so now we have three shells right and you can you know 
add another one if you want and if you want to navigate between them you can go shift uh, was that the left and right arrow All right you can go there let's see list another one actually let's go to to the downloads or something and then list and you can go between them like that no problems All right you just shift and the arrow keys back and forth that's all you gotta do uh, if you want to close them control shift and then s s and then you close them like that now we only have two shells all right uh this one you actually split or like have like multiple terminals in one shell so if you go control shift t it'll split uh top and bottom so now you have two terminals uh if you want to do control shift l now you can split it like to a smaller portion so now you have three terminals and let's list one out here right uh, if you want to navigate between them because now our cursor is actually in here right or I mean I don't know what you call it but the cursor is in here or what you are typing here is only in this portion if you want to navigate between them uh, control shift and then up and down so you go up you go over here we go echo hello right uh, control shift up and or down like I said to navigate between these terminals that we have open if you want to close just that terminal control shift and R R right and then we'll close off just a single terminal not to destroy the whole shell okay and that's what we have there you know you can do some stuff like that it has some different funky ways that you can do it uh, so this is a built-in feature. There's other programs like GNU Screens or Tmux that can do this, but that's like another program to have this feature. So the thing that this has uh, over Gake is just that you can have multiple, um, I guess, terminals in one screen. Um, so that's it. That's the only difference, really. And only recommend it if you're, you know, a KDE user. But you could use it on GNOME too if if uh, you know you install the dependencies and shit. So, uh, if you're a KDE, use it. If you're on GNOME, use uh, Gake, and uh, that'll be it for this one. Okay. Oh yeah, this one other feature I forgot to talk about is uh, make sure you you know get this little checkbox here. Keep Windows open when least focus. Otherwise, this thing will disappear if you click somewhere else. Right. And after you have all your settings, whatever, make sure you close the program uh, just so you can save it, the settings, and then open it again. And then now will be your um, settings by default forever now. Okay. That's it for this one.